Hello! Welcome to my National Youth Theatre Frequently Asked Questions. My disclaimer is that I'm answering these questions because you keep asking me, not because I know anything on the subject, because I don't. I have no idea what they want from you, from me, from anyone. I have no idea. I'm so sorry. But anything I do know I will pass on. It's always good to hear new advice, even if you go, um, I think that's a load of bull and monologues. Loads of people have asking asked me <laughs> what speech that I what speech did I do? I did Romeo and Juliet, the part of Juliet, at the age of sixteen or fifteen. And I pretty much looked like this five years ago. Like I've always looked as if I'm about thirty two. I've always looked this way. So it wasn't a very good role for me to choose. They want you to choose someone that they can imagine casting you in, and you can't. You you would be unlikely to imagine me as a as a Juliet, because I was so mature looking, and it just wasn't a role I was likely to play. Moreover, it is so well known. It's like the Hamlet speech. Oh, that this too too solid flesh would melt. I've never done that monologue, but I know it because so many other people have done that monologue around me. If you're going to do those speeches, it is risky. But I did get in with it, and I think the reason I got in with it was because I really knew the text really well, and I really knew the character really well, and I felt like I had a real understanding of what the character was like, and I felt like I related to the character as well. It wasn't some you know, distant, I'm, I'm being Juliet today. It was, it was the Juliet part of my personality, if that makes sense. And also I had my own little insight in it, in my pretentious, precocious way, which is that I think Juliet is really horny and really rude, really arrogant and really spoiled. I don't think the speech is about her being so sad and young and not understanding this world. Wherefore, villain, dost thou kill my cousin? It's wherefore, villain, dost thou kill my cousin? It's angry. It's I wanted to have sex with you tonight and now I can't because you've gone and got yourself banished. And now my whole family is in a fuss because you did kill my cousin. That's not cool. If you love me, why did you kill my cousin? Um, and it's all that stuff. Like, she's she's snotty and arrogant to me. And we talked a little about that and how I thought she was snotty and ag- arrogant. And I think that, more than anything, is why I built the place. <clears throat> because it it was a really poor monologue to choose so i think think wisely about what monologue choice you make but at the, at the end of the day if no one tells you that it's an overdone speech you don't know i didn't know that juliet was totally inappropriate for me for ages until someone told me you know i like the speech i related to it why shouldn't i do it is still my feeling is Shakespeare best or is a monologue, uh, modern monologue best? I don't know whether you're, there are any new rules about whether you're allowed to do a modern or a classical monologue. At the time, there were none while I was there about which you could do. Um, whichever you feel comfortable, most comfortable with, I would recommend. Personally, I actually find Shakespeare more comfortable because I, I love the way he writes. Um, I love thinking about his work, so I spend more time on it. Um, I also love learning the lines when it's in Shakespearean. I know that sounds weird because it's foreign words, but a really easy trick for learning Shakespearean monologues and making sure you get the iambic pentameter in. Iambic pentameter is the way it goes, didum, 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 didum. And Shakespeare will always do this. O poor my lord, what tongue shall smooth thy name? It, it all follows the same rhythm, so you can say it in the same way, and that makes it so much easier to learn. And it means you've got that undercurrent of iambic pentameter there, so that anything you layer up on that to make it sound more naturalistic, still keeps true to the didum 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 didum, which is the drive behind Shakespeare. And lots of people think it should still be there. I personally not too so sure, but loads of people, loads of Shakespeare people think it should be there. So leave it there. But equally, contemporary monologues are brilliant too. If you find them more accessible, go with that. Which whichever you think you do best, um, go for. If you're interested and passionate about the role and the character, do it. Where can you find good speeches? If it is Shakespeare, <clears throat> feel free to Google good Shakespeare monologues for women. That's not a problem because there are only so many Shakespeare monologues anyway. Everyone will have seen thousands of people 
do those monologues before you, you are not the first to do them. That You're probably not even coming up with an entirely new concept for that character. It's about how you relate to the character, not how the character is related to. It's all about you, it's the personal. So you can look on the internet because they'll all be the same anyway. There's no point looking for like an original Shakespeare, like one that no one does. Oh, I'll do this one from Antony and Cleopatra because no one will have done it before. <laughs> or I'll compose an entirely new monologue by just ripping out other people's lines and so it forms a monologue. Don't, don't bother. There's no point. That's not what Shakespeare and performing Shakespeare is about. Performing Shakespeare is about reinvention. And you're not reinventing anything if you're just ripping things out. If you're looking for a contemporary monologue, I do not recommend doing that because if you go on the internet you will find one of very few monologues that are out on the internet and everyone else will probably be doing the same thing. You're, you're possibly doing it right now. It's not a good idea, I don't think. What I recommend is going on a trip to the National Theatre Library, not library, bookshop, or the French, French Samuels, Samuel French Library in London. They're both in London. They're really huge bookshops which have a whole load of modern plays coming out. I usually go to Samuel French's, but I don't actually like Samuel French's that much. <laughs> because most of the books I've found have been American and I've not liked them that much because I didn't find them very ex well because they weren't fit to purpose I went there to find a monologue that was similar to me and I find it difficult to relate to a lot of the characters because they had cultural barriers that I couldn't jump across because I'm too weak of a performer the other thing I recommend is going to libraries and going through your drama department because although little books of monologues are quite good it's easy to make the cardinal sin of reading the monologue from the book and not reading the rest of the play because you cannot play a character without knowing the background of what what comes around it otherwise you can't imagine playing a character in a play if you've never seen or read the, that play um you just don't have the understanding i remember someone <laughs> In an audition I went to, um, they performed this really actually very good monologue and then they said, right, that's lovely. What play was that? I didn't catch it. And he was like, oh no, it doesn't have a name. It was just in a book of monologues. It's never just in a book of monologues. <laughs> if the book is literally, if the play is monologue, then it's a play in itself. It still has a name and an author. And if it's in a book of monologues, if it's a compilation of, compos compilation? of monologues then it will still have a book that that goes without saying just you need to know the book so what i recommend is reading as many plays as possible and then <clears throat> as you read the plays be constantly thinking is that a good monologue can i relate to that character is it long enough i've always found my monologues doing that the most successful as opposed to traipsing through these books that Pretty much every a other actor also has. It just doesn't work out as well. I think those are all my questions on monologues. They are indeed, thank goodness, because it's been 10 minutes and 48 seconds. Have a lovely rest of YouTube. Goodbye. Good luck with your audition.